that compass shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. The day comes. The day comes that will burn like an oven. And then, in verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before, before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Do you see the wisdom of God first announcing what would happen when the day of the Lord would be, and then giving the promise before that day coming, before the earth goes up in flame, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, to turn, to turn the hearts, not the heads, <laughs> not the heads, <laughs> to turn the hearts, the hearts. For this, beloved, you must read First Kings 18, verse 37. There, when Elijah came, he restored the altar, he took the twelve stones according to the twelve tribes, and then he rebuilt the altar, he put the sacrifice, and he put water upon the sacrifice, and then he prayed. There were 455 priests, 400 Asherah priests, but the prophet of God was sure that he is there in the name of the Lord to do what God showed him what God called him to do. And he would say, I've done this according to your word. And then God gave the answer the fire test. And in verse 37 it says, And God turned their hearts. And God turned their hearts. By the divine confirmation that this man is a man sent from God, he spoke in his name, he acted in his name, and God confirmed the word. What is Brother Brennan's message? Back to the word, back to the teachings of the apostles, back to the foundation, and this is restoration. And beloved brothers, especially your ministering brethren, I have to emphasize this very strongly. Not restoration just in words, but restoration in reality. The New Testament church must be restored to where she was at the very beginning, filled with the power of God, with all the ministries, with all the gifts, with all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The restoration must be a reality. As we said before, justification was not only a teaching, it was experience as a reality. Sanctification was not only a teaching, it was experience as a reality. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not only a teaching, it's an experience, it's a reality. And so, before the return of Christ, the New Testament church must come back to the same foundation Amen. laid by the apostles, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Amen. The first sermon and the last must be the same. The first baptism and the last must be the same. And with this, we go directly, quickly to Acts chapter 2, where the first sermon was being preached. And please, we seemed it well to have this surprise, this surprise, that the Apostle Peter, in his first sermon on the day of Pentecost, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, referred to the prophet Jonah chapter 2, verse 31. I read it to you. First from Acts chapter 2, verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great lot of the day of the Lord would come. Let's go to Joel chapter 2, 
John chapter 2. Here, the Lord God spoke through the prophets in the Old Testament. Joel chapter 2, verse 32. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord will play. Are you surprised? About the leading of the Holy Spirit in the first sermon on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Peter to refer to the promise given to us. Elijah will come first before that great day comes. Before sun turns into darkness and the moon into blood, God promised to send the prophet like Elijah to turn our hearts back to God, back to the Word, back to the obedience. He mentioned in the first sermon, Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. In the first sermon, the Apostle Peter said what I have to say in the last sermon. Hallelujah! Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord! We understand by the grace of God how perfect the Word of God is. God knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And even in the New Testament, our Lord confirmed the promise from the Old Testament. It says here in Matthew chapter 17, in Matthew chapter 17, you all know this mighty experience on the Mount of Transfiguration. But here, the disciples were asking in verse 10, in Matthew 17, verse 10, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say this Christ that Elijah must first come? And like for this question, and glad for the question. And now I will look in the answer. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore. Restore. If you read about John the Baptist, always the word prepare, prepare, prepare. In Isaiah 14, prepare. Malachi 3, prepare. Matthew 11, 10, prepare. Mark 2, 3, prepare. Always prepare, prepare. But when the ministry is spoken of, that will be at the end of the day of salvation. And according to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6 to 8, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, this is the day of salvation. So before the day of the Lord comes, at the end of the day of salvation, God would send the prophet to restore all things. And we're living in, at that time when God is about to restore all things. We just must believe this promise and line up with the Lord and His Word. Now please listen to what the beginning of verse 11 says, And Jesus answered, Not anyone but Jesus. I tell you right now, beloved friends, if you have the answer from the lips of Jesus, you will never speak to a pope or pastor or bishop or any, anyone. If you have the answer from the word of God, from the lips of Jesus Christ. You don't go to a denomination. You don't ask any preacher or big evangelist. What do you say about Malachi 4? You don't ask anyone. No. If Jesus has given you the answer, that's forever enough and enough. And if you don't believe the answer Jesus gave, you will never get the right answer again. So, please, did you understand what I say? Here the Bible says, and Jesus answered. 
And Jesus answered. Have you received this answer? Yes. What is his answer? Truly, Elijah said, first come and restore all things. So the ministry of Brother Brandon was a ministry of restoration. We goes back to the work of God. And he had a restored apostolic prophetic ministry as no one ever had on the face of the earth. But now our time comes. Now our time is here that the restoration becomes a reality. Even in Mark chapter 9, our Lord confirmed the same promise from the Old Testament. Do you see how Old and New Testament are in harmony together? Mark chapter 9, verse 12. And he answered and said to them, Elijah truly or verily comes first and restores all things. All things. All things. So, John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. But he was not the Elijah that was to come before the day of the Lord would be, before sun turns into darkness, two thousand years have come and gone, sun is not yet turned into darkness, but after this ministry, after this message is over, after the calling out has taken place, sun will turn into darkness. The moment in the sixth seal, you can read it in Revelation chapter 6 from verse 12, when the sun turns into darkness. If you hear what Brother Branham said and what was revealed to him about the seven seals, it just is amazing. It's just wonderful. Everything in the right place and in the right connection. So, let me say this in summarizing what we are trying to show you today. I know you are acquainted with the message of the hour. But I say this again with a broken heart. Many are not in the message. Many are in the message. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a big difference between message and message. I don't believe a single interpretation. And if it's not written in the Word of God, I don't accept it. I don't believe it. Everything Brother Branham was revealed and he has shown to us in the seven series especially, nothing did God forget. Everything is perfect. Nothing can be added and nothing can be taken away. So, if brethren dare to add the old revelation about seven numbers, about seven seeds, about the return ministry, about, about the many, 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 many things. Please don't join them. Please don't support them. Don't support a brother who brings wrong teachings. You're guilty. You're guilty with that brother if you support somebody who does not stand upon the word of God in the true teachings of the Holy Scripture. I know what I'm saying, but I just have to say it. As we read in Galatians chapter 1 verse 10, I am not here to please men, never. I'm here to please God. And just to say what God said in His word. So, everything we need to know, God has revealed unto us. All we must do is obey, line up with the word of God, be obedient, do what the Lord and the word command us to do. And accept the fact that the message given to Brother Brandon, the message of restoration is entrusted to us at this time. And therefore, I'm taking this message, this true word of God, 
And the spoken word is the written word. And the written word is a revealed word by the Holy Spirit. But I say again, don't dare to add anything. Just leave it where it is and how it is. And as I said before, don't take statements for the Branham made out of comfort. I'll give you one example. Brother Branham was preaching in Phoenix. And then towards the end, he made the statement, I will return. And from this one statement, they made a return ministry. That Brother Branham would return and complete his ministry in a tent. First, where is the promise for that? Where is the promise for that? In the Word of God. If there's no promise, there's no fulfillment. And I don't want anybody to ask. No, there's no person on earth with the authority to add something to the Word of God. In fact, the curse is upon each and every one who is adding to the Word of God. So as I said before, in the name of the Lord, God revealed everything that we need to know. And there's no one else who esteems Brother Brandon's ministry as I do. And I tell you, on August the 15th, 1955, which was also Monday morning, before I met Brother Brandon in the hotel lobby, before we shook hands, he stopped and looked at me. He said, you are a minister of the gospel. And then we shook hands, and then we spoke together. So I'm not just telling you something, I'm telling you the experiences I had with the Lord and the experiences I had with Brother Branham. And I received him and the ministry given to him as an extraordinary ministry. The son of man had when he walked on this verse. And by the way, on May the 7th, 1946, at about 23 p.m., in your time, 11 p.m., when the angel of the Lord came into the room, Brother Branham was seated having the Bible on his lap, and he jumped up. And the angel said, I'm sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you about your commission. And the angel said, this Moses was given two signs, two signs are given unto you. And explaining the divine ministry of the Son of Man, that he would know even the secrets of the hearts, like our Lord in his ministry. Explaining, explaining what and how the ministry would be. And the ministry happens throughout all these years. And I am a witness of that means. But brothers, in closing, let me say it again. It's not enough to go and say the prophet said the prophets. It's not enough to just use quotes. Take the quotes back into the word, make the message the word, and the word message. Even about the return of Christ, some believe the Lord has already come. I always give the same answer. As long as I'm here, it's not in the past. Because when he comes, I go. Yeah, when he comes, I go. So if somebody says, the Lord has already come, I said, that's impossible, because when he returns, our mortal bodies shall be changed into immortality. Amen. And we shall be in his image. Here is the great secret. The Lord of glory came into a body of flesh. Because we have sinned, the original sin in the Garden of Eden happened in the body of flesh and blood. And therefore our Lord had to come into a body of flesh and blood to shed his blood to give his life in according to Leviticus 17 verse 11 and 14 the life is in the blood so the life of God was in the blood of the Son of God and that's why the Bible says he that has the Son of God has eternal life first John chapter 5 verse 11 and 12 so beloved if we are purchased by the blood of the Son of God, by the blood of the Lamb, the same life that was in the blood is in us. The same eternal life we have poured again by the Holy Spirit. And there are three that give testimony in 
witness, if not spirit and the word, and these three things always go together. So may the God of heaven be with you. May you be prepared to meet the Lord. Amen. I believe, I must finish, I know, but I believe that the return of Christ is absolutely in it. It just, it just, it just can happen at any moment. And three times our Lord said, when you see all these things come to pass, then you know it's at the door. It's very near. Look out. For your redemption is drawn near. What do we have? All the earthquakes, all the tsunamis, all the catastrophes which come upon the face of the earth, and they multiply, multiply, multiply. I was on Sumatra in Maidan in March 2005 when the earthquake shook the whole hotel. And, and I was in Haiti right after the earthquake. I've seen the outcomes of the earthquake made with my own eyes. The other friends, I say again, were very, very near to the second coming of Christ. Yes. And therefore, Matthew 25, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out. Go ye out. This is the time of going out. Come out from the mountain, says the Lord, and I will receive you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, and I will be your God. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. And also Revelation chapter 18. Come out from the mountain that you partake not of the judgment. So this is the calling out time. This is the separation time. This is the preparation time. This is restoration time. God says, I will restore unto you all the years. I will do it, chapter 2. I will restore unto you. And he said, I send you Elijah the prophet to restore the reporters. God always uses the man. And Abraham was a man sent from God, a promised prophet in our time. Confirmed by God Almighty, as no one was ever confirmed by the Lord in such a ministry and for so many years. So I shared with you the word of God, and I believe it will not return void, but accomplish what it was sent for. But read Matthew 24, read Mark 13, read Luke 21, where three times our Lord said, when you see all these things come to pass, then you know, you don't dream, you don't imagine, you don't guess, you know, you know the time is near, the time is at hand. So friends, how many believe in the return of Christ? Yes. John 14, I wrote to prepare the Let us stand for the word. Let us stand for the word. And may I ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and open your hearts. If you wish to be ready for the coming of the bridegroom, let me say this in love. Only those who are part of the bride of Christ will hear the call of the Christ. Like in the natural, if there is a marriage announced, all the ladies continue as usual. But the bride who has the promise, the bride begins. So the Bible says, in Revelation 19, verse 7, and his bride has prepared her sin. The Holy Scripture says in Matthew 25, verse 10, and they that were ready went into the marriage, and the door was closed. Please don't miss 
the day of God's visitation. Hear the word of God, receive the final message, be restored, may your heart be turned back to God, back to His word, away from all favors, from all interpretations, back to God, and back to His word. Who wishes to be included in this prayer? All of you. We should go, God bless God and assurance. Let us now pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I commit the words spoken here today into your hands and care. And I pray for all who receive your words that they might not return void and accomplish what they were sent for. In every heart, may everyone believe, believe as Abraham believed. The promise, the promise, we believe the promise of Malachi 4. We believe how you confirmed the promise of Malachi 4 in Matthew 17, in Mark chapter 9. We are witnesses of that promise to be fulfilled. Dear Lord, together we ask, help us to be prepared to come out, to be ready, and to be restored. I pray for the local assemblies, for the pastors, for all who share the word of God, that they might be encouraged, be with them, that they might preach the word with divine revelation and inspiration and conviction by the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, I thank you for Acts chapter 2, for your servant, the Apostle Peter, referred to the day of the Lord. And now we refer to it again. And as he commanded that all should be baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we command that all who believe are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. to confirm the remission of your sins Amen. by the blood of the Lamb. Receive the word of God. Receive salvation. Receive healing. Receive deliverance. Receive restoration. Receive all the blessings of Almighty God, in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah! Some of you who wish to read other circular letters or small brochures which we have published or you can do just write your papers but write it very very distinctly very so that that we might be able to read and as I said Thank you.